This is Smart Investing with Mike Rand. Securities and advisory service offered through KMS Financial Services. This is Smart Investing with Michael J. Rand. With Michael's producer, Chris Martin. You can email us your questions. Go to smartinvestingshow.com to see how. For I have the pride, the privilege, nay, the pleasure of introducing to you the one, the only. This is Smart Investing with Mike Rand. Well, good morning, everybody. I think that you might be turning on this uh, podcast in the morning, but who knows? You have uh, started another podcast of The Smart Investing Show, where we take the topic of investing. Number one, we make it easier to understand. Number two, we try to get you good, relevant information on each and every show. And thirdly, we try to be entertaining. And with the entertaining portion, that's Mr. Chris Martin. Chris, hello. Good morning. Hi. 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 So, anything new for the uh, good or the order for the uh, for the uh, comic relief of the order? The comic relief? Yeah, we can't mention um, anything about the Alec Baldwin roast. Virtually here, nothing. Here we'll say that uh, I got an award for my charity work, which was thrown in the garbage. <laughs> Why was it thrown in the garbage by accident? You mean? <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, it was apparently there was a, a party that took place. Like I told you, I had to go to that work thing on Saturday. Oh yeah. Okay, so Friday before that was a big, uh, kind of like all their salesmen and everything. Uh huh. And they announced the Difference Maker Award, which is somebody who goes out and does a lot of charity work. And it was you? And it was me, and I won the award, and so... Were you there? Well, no, because I had one day off, and they called me at like 3, and the awards thing was at 6, and I was like, I I, I don't want to (laughs) go, because I had one day off. I had a bunch of stuff to do. Sure. So... Monday or Saturday, they well, did go. they tell the tell you you were going to get an award, or did they well, just no. ask you to come into work? Saturday, I had a bunch of people come by, and they're like, "Congratulations!" What? Okay, nothing. And then they wouldn't tell me. And then I'm thinking, okay, my <laughs> wife's pregnant or something, and everyone knows but me. And uh, Monday, the uh, the HR person says, "Oh, um, I have your award. It's over at Jessica's desk." So I go over to Jessica and say, "Oh, yeah, Ashley said you had my award." No, Ashley has it. Okay, so I go back to Ashley's. Ashley says, no, I swear to you, Jessica has it. So I go back to Jessica, and Jessica's like, no, I told her. I said, I don't have it, and 100% agree that Ashley has it. So I go back, and I just told HR, look, I get paid hourly. I'll do this all day. Yeah, I'll wear a thing on the carpet. But apparently they had forgotten it at, I believe, Northern Quest, and when they called to try and find it, um, the the room was cleaned and well, it's thoroughly a- Unfortunately, so, they can't throw a car in the garbage, so it wasn't an automobile. It wasn't an automobile, no. Well, but uh, I just—they're going to order me another one, and it's not a big deal. I mean, HR was like very worried. They're like, "Was okay, it a trophy?" Or apparently, a... it's a very heavy trophy, and they throw it away. And then I guess they threw it away. So because bet... even HR was like, "I can't believe they threw that away. It was, it's huge and heavy." So it's somewhere. I bet you they're going to give no, it probably. to somebody that won the last it's, jackpot. It's probably in Chad's office somewhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's some white haired person that won seven hundred and eighty four dollars on a slot machine. Oh, took that go. sucker home. Took, oh, Holy you are the crap. difference maker. Can I just say it's eight o'clock in the morning and I'm walking through this casino and there are people that ding 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 ding. They're holding three cigarettes in their hand. Oh yeah. And one guy this is news to you? You remember? It is. I oh, didn't, okay. I, it just, it's eight in the morning. But there was one guy, you've seen The Hangover. Oh, yeah. Okay, the part where he's wearing the baby thing on his chest. Yeah. Okay, there was a man who, <laughs> and I can say it because I'm chubby, he was overweight in a special chair okay. with a dog in one of those pockets. That's awesome. And a, he was smoking in one hand, but blowing the smoke over his shoulder so it wouldn't affect the dog. And then oh, how, how humane of him. He's squishing the dog, though, when he bends over to push the button on the slot machine thing. Did the dog whimper each time or go, Arr. It just, you could tell the dog just kill me every time. <laughs> the, dog, the guy would reach over, kill me. That, you have just described a living was, far side cartoon. That was a whole movie I could have done about that guy. That's awesome. It was eight in the morning. Just, yeah. I like the fact that he was blowing the smoke over his shoulder. Oh, away from the dog. There was so much smoke. I walked through the casino. I came out the other side holding three cigarettes. I don't know where they came from. (laughs) 
And with that, we have our our story to kick off the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for that. What are we talking about? That was for the good of the order, yeah. for sure. We talk about how to get more money at a casino at 8 in the morning. <laughs> so today's show, I've actually got notes like usual, but they're, they're, uh, there's more of them. Today's show is going to be out why things are good. Believe it or not, I think that you, the listener, need to know this. Why things are good. Things you could say, uh, let's insert some different words or topics. Why the future is good. Why the economy is good. Why the investments in companies that I like are good. Why your life is probably going to be better than you think. Yeah, I know. It's a bugger opening up a podcast, then hearing a funny story from Chris, and then to top it all off, me being optimistic. What is going on? I know I know that you feel like just turning this sucker off right now because <laughs> optimism kind of probably isn't your thing. It, it's not a big seller. <laughs> so happy day. At least we're not talking about, you know, death insurance, life insurance, things like that. I'm going to put some... Uh... So maybe some birds in the background and maybe do that. You know, oh, cr- yeah, crickets. Some yeah. Nice music. Yeah. When you cut this up, make sure it's uh, even more hideous. I'll, I'll make it very Disney-esque. Yeah. Make it Brady Bunch-esque yeah. or Hogan's Heroes-esque. <laughs> Schultz. So anyway, what was that? Was that my leg? I guess so. So anyway, um, yeah, why things are good. Why, why would you need to know this? Well, because nobody's telling you this. And because we're humans and we kind of like to th- dwell on the negative, probably none of us are thinking this way. And if we are, we probably think about it a little bit too little. So I've got a couple columns of my notes. Uh, one side of them are entitled facts. The facts of why things are better than probably that you think and why things are better going forward. And then on the other side of the page, I've got psychology written with a line underneath it. What are some psychological uh, issues, facts, topics, some psychological things that make the future better than probably what you think? And you, you the listener, you the investor, you the normal uh, nice human being that too bad you're not a, a neighbor of mine because you would love being a neighbor of mine. I'm a good neighbor, you know. No leaf blowers. No. Nothing. Uh, all my two cycle engines pretty much put away. My riding lawnmower is completely muffled. It's pretty nice. And I keep the blades whisker sharp so I can mow fast, which means if you're outside drinking a beer, I'm not going to interrupt your outside beer drinking very long with noise of the riding lawnmower because I'm hauling ass. So I'm going, zzz, you know, and and just hauling ass, ass, ass. It's It's the mowing nude, though, that... Have you fixed that part? Do you throw a towel over yourself now at least? The mowing nude? Yeah, you wouldn't. I've heard from your neighbors you mow nude. <laughs> no, no. No? They just think so. You, you quit. It's that flesh colored outfit. It's the flesh colored I, pajamas just, that you wear when you do it. I'm just kidding. So, anyway, facts. Let's say, uh, I don't know, should I jump between the two or should I just run down the facts and then just, maybe let's just separate them? I'll talk about the facts first. And then we'll talk about the psychology second. Yeah, let's end it on a downer. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I think bring it might, people back. I think it might be easier than going back and forth. So anyway, facts. What on earth could I be thinking of that's factual? Why I have a pretty uh, optimistic view of the future when it comes to the stock market and investing, and especially investing in the companies that I like. One of the first ones is uh, these are pretty much going to be technology reasons but I'll I'll jump down to the bottom and I'll start with something that's not technology based. Uh one of my first reasons that I'm optimistic looking forward is that there's really no change in the way human beings are spending their money. In fact, it's increasing when you look at the rest of the world and if you especially look in the southern hemisphere, if you look at the I hate to say third world countries because some a lot of them I've never been to, so I can't really tell you if they're third world or not. Uh, but if they're they are emerging economies or growing economies, people in those places are being able to spend money on things that they've never been able to spend money on before. If you're talking, hold on a sec here. We're getting a we're getting a major we're getting a call. call in the newsroom. Yeah, hold on one minute. Yep. Yeah. And so anyway. Um, 
that's yeah, that's what's going on. Is that people's behavior isn't changing? You've got people. What is? Do we have the? Uh, we oh. must have a big truck outside. Yeah, yeah, your windows open just a crack. <laughs> yeah, so we're getting the outside. Uh, outside. It's very busy here, people. You have yeah. no idea. <laughs> and the comings and goings of this. House. You're lucky we're doing this podcast of all the stuff <laughs> that's going on. You're welcome. So you've got a lot of people that uh, used to not have money in emerging markets. If you're talking pretty, if you're talking markets that have been going for a ways, you're talking folks that have not flown before that are starting to fly and take vacations or see relatives. You know, there is going to be sustained demand for air travel into the future. And that's not just air travel. You could even reduce it down to something is very, uh, a, a lot less costly, like uh, folks in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, where they're actually being able to have enough money to spend some money on more more westernized soap, or more westernized culture, more westernized makeup. Just the daily things that I think a lot of us would take, uh, that would take uh, for granted, like what we'd pick up at a Walmart or a Target or what used to be a Shopco. <laughs> what we have at dollar stores, basically. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that stuff is is very much a lifestyle increase for a lot of the rest of the world. So that's that drives a lot of business. And to be honest, even though a lot of it's negative, there's no change in people's behavior. The one change in their behavior, I think, is that people are becoming truly less informed, less uh, less intelligent when it comes to the way that they intake their information. I have a lot of folks that, uh, I won't say I have a lot of folks, I hear a lot of people repeating things that they have either read or seen on the internet that are absolutely so far out that I, I can't even believe that they're doing it. And I've even, uh, listening to public radio the other day, they were talking about something like climate change. And I just even noticed a simple sentence that says, the nation's oceans are warming up. And I started thinking to myself, what nation's oceans are they talking about? The United States doesn't own the Atlantic or Pacific. Yeah, we bought that last week. I didn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And then later... They threw in Australia, which I thought was great. <laughs> later on in the article, they... Uh, and we're talking a spoken article on the radio. Later on, there was another sentence that said the world's oceans, which is obviously more correct, more accurate. When they're saying the nation's oceans, why would a writer put that in there to try to make us feel more guilty that we're the ones, you know, peeing in the ocean more than the rest of the world? I don't know what I don't know what the reasoning would be behind putting that word there. Maybe they're just stupid. I don't know what the reasoning would be why the editor didn't catch it. I think it's one of those things where he was going to use world, but he already used world, so he had to use another, no, another he, way to say it. But it was the nation's oceans firstly. Yeah, maybe maybe they, maybe they, it was just an honest, simple mistake he like that. He didn't own a thesaurus. But do you know what I mean? Is oh, yeah. that there is a lot of slanting of facts going on, and I just want to pay attention to the facts because the facts are enough. I think that if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably in a pretty good situation. You're probably investing for the future. You probably, I would hope if you're listening to this podcast, you're a more discerning uh, consumer of information than most folks. And let's be, let's be frank, when we've got Twitter and we've got all of this stuff, I think that most of us kind of had a notion in our mind how insanely stupid a lot of the population is. And now... That veil has been removed, and we absolutely know for certain how stupid the population is. There isn't, any, there isn't anything left to the imagination anymore. Yeah, the bad things that people were probably saying or talking about, yeah, they for sure are. Yep, yeah. so it's, it's come true. And what's nice about that for me is that the positive part when it comes to investing is that behavior not changing is very, very helpful to me because... People will be visiting the companies and buying the products that they like, and that means that there's profits out there to be had. So let's move up to the facts, why things are good, why the future is good, why the economy, why investments are good. Uh, the first one is going to be 5G. 
I'm not quite sure that anybody has a very good handle on how revolutionary 5G is going to be. When you have basically a wireless uh, a wireless node at almost every building, almost every residence now out there, I think most folks have wireless in their home. Okay, And I'm thinking yeah. that they probably have how many devices hooked to the wireless? You've got however many TVs you have. How- however many kids you have times that by three. Yeah, probably cell phones, uh, uh some sort of a PlayStation sort of a thing. So you could Alexa or Yeah, you could have anywhere, let's say three is probably the minimum up to twelve. Okay. If you're in a business and there's Wi Fi going on, uh wi a Wi Fi connection in a business, then it could be everybody's cell phone times everybody's laptop times everybody's tablet times everybody's uh desktop PC. So you can see the types of numbers that you would have if you took, let's say one square mile of a downtown area or one square mile of a residential area, you're probably talking many, many, many hundreds of devices uh, connected in a square mile. I'm not sure that you would be approaching a thousand, maybe in a very dense area like in New York City, a Los Angeles, maybe something like that, that you're talking thousands of devices. When you're talking 5G, the communication is going to be so fast And the connection is so much of a magnitude of a different jump up in speed and jump up in connectivity that you're talking in the future for one square mile, probably a million connected devices. Where are these devices going to come from? You might, if you're listening to this podcast, I can truly understand if you're thinking, what do you mean by a million? What the hell? What what would be connected? Well, how about the Apple Watch nowadays? The app, oh yeah. Okay. How about if uh, let's just let's just try to think of little futuristic things. How about your to- your toothbrush is connected to the internet? Okay. Your toothbrush is connected and it's got a sensor in there that can measure uh, measure the microbes in your mouth. Your toothbrush might actually tell your Apple Watch. We called it a truth brush, which was actually a pretty good name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could, it could actually tell you the level of the plaque. It could tell you if you might be coming down with a cold. It could tell you a lot of things. Real time, by the way. The latency and the speed of the information that can be had is pretty much like elect- electricity used to be, you know, we're talking well more than 100 years ago, electricity was a was a, a revolutionary idea, a revolutionary event, because it meant that with a simple socket in your building or your house, you could have access to energy. So I don't want to sound too simple talking about this, but obviously if you've got a socket and you plug something into the socket, think of all the things that you've got plugged into the house that do work for you that you can imagine if you go camping and if you don't take a generator with you, you can you have almost nothing with you that does work that helps. You know what I mean? You can have a sharp knife and you can have an axe, but there's so many things in your house that do work for you that you just plug into the wall and things are good, like your refrigerator. Keep stuff cold. It's pretty nice. You could go on and on and on, things that we take for granted. Well, I'm telling you that we're starting another process That when we look back a decade from now, a decade from now into the future, we're going to be taking stuff for granted that we don't take for granted today. You know, stuff like Airbnb and how we can buy things so quickly on the Internet and things like that. We we take that for granted. And just a little while ago, we weren't able to do that. And this is a whole nother magnitude of jump up in terms of data and speed, basically This Internet of Things is going to give us the ability to have information pretty much instantly, any time that we want it. And we're talking about kind of a major, (coughs) excuse me, major and uh, major things in the world. Like, for instance, like this toothbrush, being able to tell that you're sick. How about real time communication when you are in an ambulance going to ER where typically it's a transfer of data where everybody's telling the EMTs or telling the triage nurse or whatever what's going on. What if the triage nurse already knows what's going on because it's truly instantaneous real-time data in their office in the emergency room as you pull up. They already know what's going on to the second. 
what if you're a surgeon and you are, let's say you're a beginning surgeon, you're in medical school, and you're trying to learn how to prefer to perform, let's just say, uh, let's say orthopedic, something simple, like if I think it's simple, I've never done it, like a knee replacement or a hip replacement. Let's say that you're, that you're learning that. I hate to bring up Marvel Comics, but let's say it's exactly like one of the Iron Man movies where you've got basically a schematic that lays over the knee that you're working on, and one of the best surgeons in the world is showing you what to do real time because of art of because of this fast communication speed so you can basically uh, augmented reality is what I'm looking at looking after is that imagine a grid pattern on the person's knee that you're working and with what you're looking at maybe you're looking through a screen maybe you've got glasses maybe there's a different way that they can make a hologram that surgeon that's one of the best in the world you can learn from them real time and that surgeon obviously doesn't have to be there the surgeon can be on the other side of the world teaching you how to do a knee replacement and do you see what i mean it it really brings up we are going to be really close to you listening to this podcast to have your own assistant like jarvis that's on the iron man well and also just downloading files will just be instant. I need that. Yeah. There it is. That quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um... It, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, when you tell your kid, like, when they come home and they're all upset about something, like, oh, you don't know what a real job's like. That's kind of where we're at. You don't know what real internet is, and then we'll have this. Yeah, it's so much that I, unfortunately, with what I do every day and dealing with people, I don't have the ability to do so much reading and research to make this podcast mind blowing like a TED talk would be. I'm trying to, you know, I feel this feeling of scrambling up this wall to try to get you, the listener, all of this amazing information. And no matter how excited I am or how much information that I'm going to try to get you, it, I, I think I'm going to fall short of what I'd really like to do. So you're just going to be able to have instant information anytime that you want it. Anytime that you want it. And with things being connected, your bicycle could easily be connected so that as you're riding on the road, you've got all of these damn autonomous cars. But when I think about it, if somebody's vaping their marijuana in the car while they are texting, I don't mind their car kind of knowing that they're coming up on me fatso on a bicycle. And the car's going to hopefully make sure that they don't drift over on the shoulder and take me out. Maybe the car keeps them from doing that because both the car and the bicycle are connected to the Internet of Things. Kind of amazing. Do you think that there's going to be more business to be able to be done and business changes because of that? Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. I've mentioned it on the podcast before. You've got CRISPR technology where they're dealing with the nucleus of a cell. They are trying to basically change one gene, one one snippet of a protein information in the DNA and insert it into the nucleus of the cell to try to make that cell do something better for you and your health and your body. We've got another technology coming out now, and the reason that that's dangerous is once you, maybe not dangerous, but why there's risk to it, is once you change that cell, it's changed forever, which is good in some ways, but also there's a lot of forever risk when it goes to that they're looking at different technologies now where they're looking at changing the rna of a cell which means you don't have to go to the nucleus but it also means is that it doesn't it's not a change in the cellular biology for forever it's kind of a dosing thing they're trying to get it's kind of a a fatty lipid they're trying to hide the proteins and the instructions that they need. They're trying to disguise it in a fatty lipid type scenario where your body's immune system won't attack it. And once they can sneak it by and get it into the outer cell wall of your cell, it's a good thing. And they've all, I can't remember, there's already been one successful drug approved in the world using this sort of technology. And it's got a little bit less risk because it's not a forever change to your therapy. It's not a forever therapy 
that no, dust does not, once. It's not changing your DNA. It's, yeah, but it's all. But you would have to dose all of the time. But you're going right to the cell, so it means that it can be completely custom. It can it can be customized for your own DNA. Obviously, it can be customized for your own affliction or whatever disease that you're trying to deal with. The problem is, is that it has to be dosed kind of like a drug. They're trying to figure out how much of this dose that they could actually sneak into the body. And if you have to be dosed over time, the risk with that is at some point in time, your body's immune system may wake up and figure out that they're snuggle, they're smuggling stuff through the border and your immune system wakes up and you come become really, really sick. And this is me Somebody, this is a portfolio manager that I'm a portfolio manager that has to make sure that I'm doing the right thing for my clients. And that means that I kind of have to have a pretty, pretty general knowledge on most subjects, a pretty detailed knowledge on some other subjects. And so obviously this isn't anything sort of like a TED talk, but it's enough for me to realize that the future is so bright, especially in terms of healthcare and technology, that we should all be wearing welding goggles because it's so bright it's blinding. Yet nobody is talking about how wonderful this stuff is. You know, I see the downside as well. The Internet, most I don't get any information off the Internet. And when I do, I trust maybe 10% of it. And I don't even trust that fully. Because the internet is becoming a place where people just are trying to get your attention. They're not basically trying to get you a fact. When you've got Facebook and Google and all their algorithms that they're running on trying to make sales and try to garner people's attention, they're not necessarily trying to get you good information. So obviously there can be a downside as well. You've got a smart house if it's connected to the internet and you can set your thermostat and so on by your cell phone. Obviously, somebody could hack that, but I have a feeling that the blockchain technology might make that a lot harder, where people are thinking of Bitcoin and, you know, oh, it's a new currency. That's only one small part of that new mathematical technology called blockchain, and I think of it as not a very important part. The blockchain technology can allow somebody to have data encrypted that at least up to right now isn't hackable which is kind of nice so somebody could hack my house no one cares about your ceramic collection of cats karen (laughs) no one cares that much so that's it for the facts that's all i would that's all i was able to write down i mean i don't want to i don't want this podcast to be too you know Bright and sunny. To, no, two oh. two small details to where it be where it would become boring. I think that if you've never heard about this stuff before, obviously it's enough fancy words that you could Google them and find a hell of a lot of other podcasts where the people have PhDs behind their name and would be really exciting to talk about. Now, let's talk about the psychology of why I think the future is good, things are good, the economy is good, and investments in the companies that I like are good. What's what's going on psychological wise that is a benefit to me managing money right now? Well, the first thing is interest rates. Okay? It's a pain for most folks because most folks I would imagine that are on in years, they would rather have less investments than they do now. And I mean less exposure to the stock market. I think that it might make them feel okay. But when they leave the stock market, they're not going to make any money anyplace else. If they go to the bank, it's a percent or a little bit less than a percent. If they go out to the Internet to try to buy a CD off the Internet, maybe it's close to a percent and a half. But that's probably just for a year. And what if the interest rates after a year go after a year's time? What if they, because of some weird stretch of the imagination, they go down a little bit? Well, then you're taking your money that you took out of the stock market to reinvest at a safe fixed rate. Now that safe fixed rate even went down further? That doesn't sound very profitable. You've got a 30-year treasury bond yielding 2.14%. Wow. You've got a 10-year treasury bond yielding 1.7%. And you've got many investors, especially in the United States, pulling money out of stock market type investments 
and putting it into investments that have those kinds of yields to them. Why is that a positive thing? Well, for me, I'm doing the opposite. And it's kind of nice to be contrarian when it's plain as the nose on everybody's face how stupid those investors are being. They're not earning anything on their money. And maybe they're thinking that inflation is truly be- truly dead. I've never encountered yet a time where the price of my upgrade cell phone has gone down. The price of cell phones is skyrocketing. I think the new set of cell phones that are coming out on the market, I think if you look at the retail price of them, I think it's just under a couple thousand dollars. Let's say, what's the new iPhone? I mean, that's, I think it's eighteen hundred or seventeen hundred yeah. somewhere in there. Most people don't realize that because they just kind of nod along like a lemming and they pay it on time with whatever carrier. But the price of the cell phone is going up. There's a lot of prices that haven't gone up on certain t- items. There's a lot of items where the prices have gone up, and so I just don't see the logic where there's so much negativity that people are just parking tons and tons of money in U.S. Treasury bonds that yield almost nothing. You go to Europe, they're having to give money. They're, they're looking at a government saying, I'm so negative that here, here, government of Europe, please take my money. I don't even want an interest rate on it. I'm actually going to pay you to take my money from me which means you, when I give you ten grand, you are only going to give me back nine thousand five hundred bucks. I am willing to pay you to take the money off my hands. I am so negative that I don't even want to keep it myself. Why? I guess I don't trust myself. Maybe I am an idiot, and I want to give it to politicians to trust for me or a, or a sovereign government. Are you kidding me? How much money is in that kind of scenario? About thirteen trillion. Okay. And you wouldn't think that Europe would be stupid enough to do that. But if you think back to World War II and some of the heinous things that were going on in World War II, you wouldn't think that people would be stupid enough and mean enough to do those things, yet they did them. They are facts. So you've got Europe where you've got $13 trillion of money invested at negative interest rates. Who would have thought that would have ever happened before? Okay, Never underestimate the stupid behavior of human beings. And that's why the future is bright. Because if we keep our wits about us, it's kind of easier to see the opportunities when everybody else is freaking out. Psychologically speaking, the other reason that I like that happening is there isn't anything else. If you're really trying to make money, there's not too many other places, almost none. You're either owning your own business, maybe owning a good real estate investment, or owning somebody else's business, like an investment in the stock market. Again, those are the only places that are true investments. And they are even in more focus now because the interest rates that you can learn on, uh, that you can earn on other alternatives are incredibly low. So low that it's, it's kind of silly. So when we are in a time period where the stock of a very, very well run multinational corporation pays a dividend that's equal to or greater than a 30-year treasury bond, and we get the benefit of profitability in the future, we get the benefit of probable dividend increases into the future. And guess what? What if this company is exposed to some of the new technology facts that I just told you about? That's a pretty big upside. We get all of that. So I could easily see companies worldwide that are profitable actually being worth more than they are today, even at the same profit rates, because there isn't anything else. There isn't a bond market where we get a good rate of return with less risk. At interest rates this low, the risk in the future in owning a fixed income investment is quite high, quite high. And so the the consequences of this are so far-reaching It's a little bit sobering. Think about all these insurance annuity companies that are trying to offer lifetime income to people. Pretty soon, those insurance companies are going to be owning more stock market-based investments than you think that they should because they have to. If they're trying to guarantee their investor some sort of income into the future and have the income 
be anywhere worth worth noting, they're going to have to invest in an investment that has a pretty good rate of return, surely better than 1.7 or 2% per year. So I don't think most folks have ever thought about that. Okay, another psychological fact of why I think things are great is it's not different this time. This kind of comes into people's own stories that they have inside their head. Stories that are kind of that kind of pop up because maybe there's a bad president in office that they don't like, or maybe they love this one and they didn't like the last one, or it's vice versa. And they think that for somehow a bad president, in their mind a bad president, can make their investments unprofitable. That's not the case. I think Elizabeth Warren running for office, I think that is truly scary. She might be able to make a few companies out there unprofitable, but that's just my opinion. When you get right down to it, she's just one woman. I don't think she's evil enough to take down the S&P 500 index. So I mean, I'm actually, I hate to say it, but I'd actually have to be even okay in that scenario. So what I'm telling you is, is there isn't a government or a president out there that can make all 500 or 505 companies of the S&P 500 unprofitable. So you can kind of move that to the side. If that's a worry to you, simply move it to the side because if you think it's, if you think it's actually true, you're not telling yourself an accurate story. Look at the past. The past is prologue. The governments have a hell of a time uh, either making the economy extraordinarily more profitable or extraordinarily less profitable because it's too big of a ship, thankfully. I was thinking, like, even, you know, like, say, when Trump says something and the stock market goes down and then comes up or something, like, and then the new, what is it, 4, 5G? Mm-hmm. 5G. Like, there'll be problems, Yeah, problem with the big, but none of those businesses are just going to throw their arms up in the air and go, ah, screw this and quit. You're exactly right. I mean, they're right. just going to have to adapt, but they're still going to be there. Exactly. So things not being different this time, it's quite instructive because it's reality. It's accurate. It's an accurate story to tell yourself that more than likely things aren't any different. People are going to behave in wrong ways. People are going to worry about the wrong things. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Here's another psychological issue that people use to paint a negative picture going forward, and they actually should paint a positive picture going forward. They look back on 2007 and 2009 as if no one lived through it. If you, I have clients in my office. They are talking about how bad the market was. They're using words, and they're using nonverbal body language as if both they and I are dead, that it was so bad the, that we're simply spirits talking about how shitty it was. They're so removed from reality that they've got this super memory created inside themselves how horrible it was. Okay, obviously, everybody lived through it. They are talking about this 2007 to 2009 as if they lost everything. Well, obviously, they didn't because they're talking to me in my office and they still have an account that's not zero. So obviously, they didn't lose everything. The next step is they're talking about 2007 and 2009 as if their account didn't recover. It did. So their account is significantly higher than it was at the bottom in 2009 and significantly higher at the high of 2007. Yet the words that they are telling me and the adjectives that they're using to describe it, it's as if they aren't better off than they were. And that's not accurate. If you look at the numbers, the numbers are bigger. And so you've got people thinking that they didn't live through it. At least they're acting like it. They're talking like they didn't live through it. They're talking like they lost everything. They're talking as if their account didn't recover. And they're actually also talking like they didn't realize that the stock market could go down temporarily. Or they didn't realize it could go down that much. And I can I can forgive them for all of it because people are human. But thinking that the market can't go down or can't go down that much, that's two different things. Everybody should realize it's always going to go down from time to time. And it can go down a hell of a lot. But that's that's why 
I think that things are actually better than most people realize because most folks in the world talk about 2007 to 2009 as if they lost everything. Their mouth is just running nonstop about how shitty it was, yet their account is larger than the high that it was in 07. And I'm looking at them trying to figure out where they're coming from. What are they on about? What are they, what are they looking for? Because it's so diametrically opposed and so not based in reality that I really have to start from square one. Do you see how difficult that is? Mike, you'll find many of the truths that we cling to are true from a certain point of view. <laughs> I believe Ben Kenobi said that best. Probably, yeah. It's, uh, I'm just completely amazed on how the negative psyche inside of most people is driving their their conversation, their conversation that they have with themselves, their conversation that they have with me, their conversation that they probably have with family members and other loved ones. But we we all know the one guy where if you, oh, man, I had lunch today, I only had a dollar. Oh, you think that's bad? I only got 50 cents. We all know that guy. Yeah. But it's it's just so amazing because they did just go out to lunch, and they were at a nice spot. They they as they are interrupted as they're telling me how bad things are by their cell phone ringing. <laughs> do you see how New iPhone? <laughs> yeah. Do you see how kind of hypocritical that is? So anyway, this is the show that's entitled "Why Things Are Going to Be Okay," why things are actually good. And those that's just a little snippet of the fact side and a little snippet of the psychological side of why me, your host, Mike Wren, thinks that, thinks that things are actually much, much better going forward than most people give it credit for. And that's pretty much today's show. All right. I did want to remind people, I did get a couple of emails. Uh, people were having problems downloading the show. Hmm. And that problem has since been fixed. It was a coding error. And so you should be able to download the show from any podcatcher now again. So that's all taken care of. Okay. Well, thanks for telling them that. We'll try to be back again next week with another good show. Take care. Any opinions expressed here are given in good faith and are subject to change without notice and are correct only on the stated date of issue. Past performance is not always indicative of future results. This material is not intended as an offer or solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security or other financial instrument. Security financial instruments or strategies mentioned may not be suitable for all investors. Prices, values, or income from any investment mentioned in this report may fall against the interest of the investor and the investor may get back less than the amount invested. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs and is not intended as a recommendation of particular securities, financial instruments, or strategies to you. Before acting on any recommendation on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and, if necessary, seek professional advice.